Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, you can see I have an xy uh, plane, and I have the point negative 3, 4 right there, and I have a little ray coming out, and I want the, this angle right here. Okay, I'm interested in this angle that uh, terminates. Its terminal side goes from the origin through this point negative 3, uh, 4. Okay, so this is the xy point on the xy coordinate plane, and I want to know this particular angle. I want to know the sine of it, the cosine, and the tangent. Okay, now I don't, I'm not um, going to be looking for the actual angle measure right now. Of course, this is something else you need to know. What I just want to know is given this information, what is the sine, cosine, and tangent? So those of you that are studying trigonometry, okay, like 100% of you must know how to do this to pass your uh, course, okay, your tr at least the trigonometry portion of it, because so many things are dependent upon in trigonometry of your ability to evaluate and find tr uh, trigonometric functions of particular angles, okay? And what I'm going to be talking about is something you need to keep in mind. So um, now who does this apply to? Well, obviously any of you that are studying trigonometry, but uh, trigonometry is not uh, taught like in a semester course. Way back in the good old days, years and years and decades ago, actually, it was fairly common to see um, like semester courses on trigonometry, but I don't really see that much anymore. Typically, trigonometry is encapsulated within, like, say, a pre-calculus course, maybe college algebra course. Um, you kind of touch upon it, like, let's say, in geometry and maybe algebra. You learned a little bit, but what I'm talking about is more advanced trigonometry where you really get into it, and it typically takes about a third, uh, maybe up to a semester of um, a course they might be taking. So again, this is kind of applicable to those of you that are studying, you know, pre-calculus, uh, maybe college algebra, um, some level course along these lines. You're definitely gonna, you're definitely gonna need to know this. So it's not that difficult. Um, again, uh, you know, nothing is difficult once you understand it. So if you were a little confused about this, or if you're like, you know what, I don't even know what you're talking about. Let me just stick around for a few minutes to learn something. Well, it's not that difficult. Now, the first thing I will say is that you should have a basic understanding of right angle trigonometry, or this may not make uh, uh, basically you know, much sense. So if, in other words, if I give you an angle right here and you have, let's say X and I have um, uh, four and I have five, and I said, find this angle, okay? Hopefully you can do that by using your knowledge of SOHCAHTOA. Now, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel in my um, uh, Algebra 2 Pre-Calculus Trigonometry playlist that will explain in my Geometry playlist as well that will explain basic right angle trigonometry. So that's a little bit of a prerequisite here, but what we're talking about um, for this particular problem is a little bit you know, more advanced and it's directed towards those of you that are in a full real deal uh, course like pre-calculus where you're, you know, getting into some heavy-duty, exciting trigonometry, okay? So I'm going to get into this, uh, you know, exactly uh, what we need to do here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement, and of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my uh, math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses, ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and um, I have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. Uh, so if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, tons of other type of exams, anything that involves math, uh, I likely have it. So just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, have a great homeschool learning program, then obviously I help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to learn math and improve, then you have to be serious about this, okay? This involves uh, work, <laughs> daily work, and that's notes. So I've been teaching math for decades, and the one thing I can point to with consistency is those students who take great math notes, not just good math notes, I'm talking outstanding math notes, almost always end up doing very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who take good math notes are very good math notes, but they take them like every other day, you know, their focus is like this. Sometimes they take good math notes. Sometimes they're checking out their 
uh, you know, their social media notifications. Sometimes they're taking good math notes. Sometimes they're talking to their friends. Sometimes they're taking good math notes. Sometimes they're doing their homework uh, for another class in math class. So you get the idea. I made all these mistakes and more, but guess what? I ended up with grades like this. So if you're not doing well in math, you got to, you know, make sure that you're taking great notes, which means you have to be uh, focused 100% of the time. That's hard to do. I get it, but that's just the real deal in terms of being successful, not only in math, but anything. Focus is key. Okay. But as you're improving in your notes, you can use my notes to study from. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right. Now, if you think you know how to do this problem, go ahead and pause it and kind of use this as a little uh, pop quiz. But if you're not sure, okay, well, let's get into it. So we're going to find a sine, cosine, and a tangent of this angle right here. So what do we need to do? Well, let's go down here and um, take a look at a couple things. So first of all, we need to build ourselves what we call a reference triangle. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this here in a second. So this angle right here, I need to kind of build a right triangle. And this right triangle, I'm going to draw down to the x-axis right there. Okay, so this angle, this is called the reference angle. This angle, okay, if I find the sine, uh, cosine, and tangent of this angle, it's the same as finding the, the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. Well, now this triangle right here has sides, okay? And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. So we're going to need to know this length of this triangle, this length, and the hypotenuse, okay? So once we have those three uh, measures of this right triangle right there, we'll be able to answer this. So this is where your SOCA-TOA comes in. So remember, now I'm using uh, Y and R here, but remember, like so, sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, if I look here, okay, I'm looking at this uh, ang angle here in yellow. What is the opposite? Okay, what's the opposite of this angle? It's this side. It's the Y component. Okay, that's why the sine is not O over H. It's Y. I'm using this Y right here because that's the opposite of this angle. And the hypotenuse, this guy right here, we're going to call like the radius R. Okay, so this hopefully is uh, somewhat familiar to you. Um, using uh, Y, X, and R to describe our SOCA TOA. Now, um, again, to be uh, redundant, if you're not familiar with basic right angle uh, trigonometry like uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent, then this video is a little bit, you know, pro probably not a good starting point for you. Go back and take a look at basic trigonometric uh, ratios uh, and, and uh, brush up on that and then come back over here. But if you're in any level of you know, if this video caught your eye, it's probably because you're taking one of these courses like pre-calculus uh, and you're like, yeah, yeah, no, this is the kind of problem I need to know how to solve. So this should be familiar to you. All right. So we can define sine, cosine, and tangent as uh, y over r for sine. Uh, cosine is x over r, which is the adjacent, okay, over the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is r, and then the x and y components will be the um, opposite and the adjacent. Of course, this all depends on what angle we're looking at. But when we're talking about reference angles like this, that's that angle is going to be right there kind of uh, being formed with that x-axis. And then we have tangent as y over x. So what we need to do is find the, um, the specific lengths of this uh, reference triangle. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here's the point, negative 3, 4, right there. So uh, what is negative 3 and 4? Well, that's the xy point. That means negative. this is negative 3 on the x. So this side right here is negative 3. And this side here, that's our negative 3, this is 4. Okay, so we have negative 3 here and 4. Now, one thing that really, really counts here is the signs. You need the signs. You can't just build a little triangle be like, oh, this is 3, this is 4. Uh, absolutely not. We need the signs. It's very, very critical, okay, that you keep the signs. So, for example, if I had a triangle over here, reference triangle over here, this would be negative, okay, and this x-axis would be positive, okay? Uh, so that's something that you absolutely must keep in mind, all right, the, whether uh, the x or y is positive or negative because that is critical in terms of getting the answer correct. 
Now, what we don't have here is the hypotenuse, but that's easy. We can just solve that by using the Pythagorean theorem. So to find R, which is the hypotenuse of this thing, we're just going to go ahead and uh, use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that's going to be 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. Take the square root of 25, and that is going to be, of course, that would be positive negative 5, but here it's always going to be positive, so R is equal to 5. Okay, so our, our uh, hypotenuse is 5. Now notice here, I'm focusing, I'm focusing in on this reference triangle. Okay, if I find the sine, uh, cosine, and tangent of this angle, it's the same as finding the sine and cosine and tangent of this angle here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. And this becomes relatively easy. All right, so here is our lovely reference right triangle. Again, we're looking for this angle, but as long as I can answer this question right here, it's effectively answering the same question. So we have negative 3 here for x. We have 4, positive 4 for y, and positive uh, 5 for r. So let's just go ahead and just follow the formula. y over r, it's going to be positive 4 over 5. So that's it. Okay, the sign of this angle here is 4 fifths. The cosine is r, oh, sorry, x over r. So that's negative 3 over 5. So negative 3 fifths is the cosine. And the tangent is y over x. So y is 4, x is negative 3. So 4 uh, over negative 3 is our tangent. Okay. So this is critical. Now, here's the thing. If I wanted to find uh, this actual angle here, okay, how can I do that? Well, I could just use the like arc function. All right. So I can go in and be like a... Uh, this, I can say, okay, what's, uh, I put this into my calculator, use degrees, find the arc sine of four fifths, that would give me the actual angle. Any matter of fact, any one of these here, finding the arc uh, cosine, arc tangent, or arc sine would give me the actual ang uh, angle measure, and you're, you're going to need to know how to do that as well. So this is a fundamental critical skill that you need to know in trigonometry. You do, once you start learning the more advanced trigonometry, you're going to be doing this a ton Okay, you're not going to be able to get away from evaluating angles, finding, you know, uh, uh, different angles and different quadrants. And this even comes into play when you're studying like trigonometric forms of complex numbers, polar equations, etc. So, you know, uh, typically if students are having trouble with that, you know, uh, more advanced trigonometry concepts is because they never really mastered this. But you can't master this until you get the basic right triangle stuff down, okay, the little Soka Toa. So even if you're in one of these classes like pre-calculus, you know, uh, maybe college algebra, go back and brush up on your Soka Toa if you're struggling with this, okay? Um, again, uh, if uh, you uh, like my teaching style, I have tons of videos on basic right angle trigonometry. Check out my geometry and my pre-calculus trigonometry playlist. You should be able to find that stuff. Um, but better yet, maybe you want to just sign up for my, my pre-calculus course and you'll learn this and much, much more. All right. So if this little video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced math. My goal, uh, what I always try to strive for is to, is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. All right. Nobody should be failing math. Okay. Even if math is not your thing. But you got to do your part, okay? Your part is you got to take strong notes, all right? You got to be engaged and focused all the time. Um, that's why I always harp on this stuff when you watch my videos, all right? If this is the first time you've seen my videos, I stress this because I want you to be successful math, all right? Nobody wants to hear this, but guess what? This is, you know, the way it goes. It's like, you know, you want to be successful math, you got to do this. Take great math notes, talk to your teacher, but, but above and beyond that, if you need additional help, there's tons of resources that you know, are available today that simply weren't available way back in the good old days, all right, you know, decades ago. So take advantage of my videos if you like them, or better yet, maybe sign up for one of my math courses. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.